Hi, I'm Rebecca Ringett, and I will be presenting today on the open source satellite mission planning tools that are now available through Komodo. I'm presenting on behalf of the Komodo team, which is listed here. Um, the Community Coordinated Modeling Center and Ensemble Consultancy have partnered together to develop these tools. Ensemble Consultancy develops and maintains the core capabilities of Komodo, which are available at their GitHub repo, repo there. And the CCMC builds upon those tools to apply these tools to model data outputs that we store at CCMC, and the link to our GitHub repo is here. Here are the models, a um, portion of the models that we have at the CCMC. And the problem that we're facing is that each one of these models that are listed here and combinations of models has its own custom code that performs a fly through custom to that model output and performs visualizations custom to that model output. And the problem that we have at CCMC is that as more models are added to this, the spider web of code and its dependencies keeps growing and it's becoming unmaintainable. And the larger that this problem gets, the more of a problem that it is. Um, so what we're doing at CCMC is we're working on applying the capabilities of Komodo to the model outputs that we host. First, let me explain what Komodo is. Um, Komodo is built upon the idea of functionalizing data and then building capabilities upon that functionalized data. Okay, so what do I mean by functionalizing data? Well, it's basically assigning an interpolator to a given data set. Uh, here's a simple function that assigns an interpolator to a one-dimensional data set, in this case, a one-dimensional data set of density values and its associated time values. The capabilities that are available through Komodo through once the data is functionalized into a Komodo object is numerous. Uh, the most obvious here is the latex representation. Uh, there, it also comes with easy unit conversion as uh, shown here. And you can use function composition to perform a large variety of analysis as shown here. Uh, because it, Komodo builds upon um, functionalized data, there's also interpolation that's available and a large variety of interactive plotting as shown here for one dimensional data. Um, it's based on Plotly, which means you can click on these variables, uh, you can zoom, you can pan, you can mouse hover to get the information and so on and so forth. All of these, var all of these capabilities are possible through Komodo and it's uh, available on GitHub as open source software in Python. We are applying Komodo at the CCMC to the model outputs, and we're developing a network of model readers for this purpose. All right, so the way the model readers work is the user simply gives the, gives the code and the string representing the model, the strings are listed here, and tells the code where the data is, and then it automatically functionalizes the data the variables in that data given. Uh, the, even the variables requested parameter here is optional. And that interface works identically, regardless of whether this is the GitHub model, the MGO empirical model, or any of the other models that we include. What goes on behind the scenes is that all of the custom data formats, grids, and interpolators are handled outside of the user's uh, outside of the user's uh, understanding. So the users don't have to understand what the whether the data is in spherical coordinates or the specialized model coordinates such as pitch angle and energy all of that is handled behind the scenes and automatically the returned komodo objects here have the same capabilities that i just described on the previous slide on top of the a network of these model readers we are building other tools such as the satellite fly through um, the real flight function is shown here, which I'll describe more in a moment, but all of the functions behave in the same way. You, the user simply chooses the model, chooses where the data is stored on their machine, chooses a couple of parameters specific to what their trajectory is going to be, and then they can easily execute a fly through function to fly the chosen trajectory through the model data. All of the coordinate conversions happen behind the scenes and automatically. The syntax is easy and doesn't care which model it is. 
You just, again, choose a model and where the data is, and you're good. All of these functions are available from the command line, and you can easily get a Komodo object from what is returned from each one of these um, fly-through fly -through functions. All of the fly-through functions uh, can generate the visualization pictured here, all of which is interactive. And there are four currently. Uh, the real flight that I showed on the previous one retrieves a real satellite trajectory and flies that through the model data chosen. Model fly through and my flight allow the users to provide their own satellite trajectories and fly that through the data. Uh, fake flight allows users to generate a sample trajectory and again fly that through the chosen model data. There are more options coming soon. On top of the fly through, we have developed a satellite constellation tool that reconstructs what a given constellation configuration would see in any pair of dimensions, including time. And this was developed in direct support of the Geospace Dynamics constellation. Uh, the functionality is currently available for any of the commodified models that uh, I showed on the previous slide. <coughs> and also with model agnostic syntax. It doesn't matter which model it is, it executes in the same way. So for example, given the simplest satellite configuration of one satellite, you can fly that one satellite through the data in this example, latitude and time reconstruction, and see what that satellite would see. In this case, it's a neutral density in the GetEm model. Or the user can choose three equidistant satellites and see what and uh, calculate what that satellite constellation would see. Notice the better resolution here. Uh, then the user can easily compare between what different con satellite configurations would see compared to what the model data shows in the same uh, using the same reconstruction analysis methods. There are several methods, but first let me dig into how the reconstruction tool works and then talk about the analysis methods. So let's talk about the simplest case of a single satellite. And let's also talk about a latitude longitude reconstruction. Uh, so the first thing that happens is the flight, the uh, reconstruction tool uses the fly through to fly that trajectory through the given model data, through the chosen model data, such so as pictured here for uh, two days worth or so of trajectory. Again, this is the given model for neutral density. <laughs> Next, what it does is it assigns a grid that the user determines and on top of the model data and sorts all of the given resulting values for neutral density into these grid cells. It then takes the average of all of the values in each grid cell and that average value then represents the data for that grid cell resulting in the reconstruction shown here. So this is what the, a single satellite uh, constellation would see in a longitude latitude reconstruction given the grid resolution chosen here. The next step that happens is the same latitude longitude grid is flown through the model data and it can be done in a variety of ways, but I'm going to take the simplest choice of flying that longitude latitude grid through the model data at an average time and at an average height and you get the results shown here. So now that you have these reconstruction from the satellite and the reconstruction from the model data, you can then uh, easily compare them because they're functionalized because this is built on top of Komodo and you can compute different things such as the percent difference such as shown here. Oh. Different analysis methods will give you different results here and that depends all upon your uh, your science question what you what is best fitting. Okay. So there are various options here. There is a collection of options to generate your constellation. It can be either a line or a grid of satellites, and you can simply do that by choosing coordinate offsets in any dimension, whether spherical or Cartesian, and any coordinate system. Um, the code assumes the coordinate offsets are in the same coordinate system of the trajectory. Um, currently, irregular constellations are not supported, but there is a way to do the analysis for irregular constellations. Um, and I'll be developing a demo, an, an example notebook on that coming soon. The uh, reconstruction can be done in any pair of dimensions, always two, never more. I don't have anything for three dimensions yet. Um, it can be longitude and latitude, it can be time and X and Cartesian coordinates, so on and so forth. Uh, I do recommend spherical reconstructions for uh, constellations in low Earth orbit. 
usually gives you uh, what you're looking for. Users can choose the grid resolution of the reconstruction. I used a 10 degree by 10 degree grid. Uh, it can be five degree by one degree or some resolution in time and height, so on and so forth. You can choose it. So I'm gonna to present to you an overview of the analysis options here and then dig into them a little bit more. So there are two options for the input trajectory. You can, the software will either uh, fly the input trajectory through the model data, unmodified, this is the unmod option, or it will take um, the two dimensions not reconstructed, take an average value for those two, and then fly that trajectory through the model data. This is the average mod. There are four options for the model data reconstruction. Um, these two are quite similar. There's average slice and averaged slice that I'm going to dig into a little more in the next slide. But basically, average slice is it'll uh, take a slice through the model data in your two dimensions, but at an average value in the dimensions not reconstructed. An average slice takes an average of a multiple uh, average of multiple slices. Uh, the orbit slicing option has two options. You can have the daytime values or the nighttime values. And what this does is it slices through the model data along the orbit. And that option was specifically developed for the GDC. <laughs> so uh, a little bit of a couple pictures to explain better what these options are. First on the trajectory options, here's a given trajectory and geodetic, uh, geodetic spherical coordinates. And the unmod option would simply fly the trajectory through the data as is. The average mod, would take uh, the average of the two dimensions not reconstructed and then fly through the data, such as this option, which keeps latitude and longitude because that's the reconstruction dimensions chosen, and um, takes the average time and average height and then flies that trajectory through the model data. So now to compare the average slice and averaged slice options, <coughs> the average slice takes a variety of slices in time and height and simply chooses the slice at the average time and height. And that is what you um, get from the model output. Um, if you need something a little more physically accurate, you can take the averaged slice option, which takes the same slices in time and height and takes the average of all of those slices. <coughs> For this option, the user chooses the resolution and time and height given a latitude longitude reconstruction. And similarly for the other pairs of dimensions. The orbit slicing uh, looks something like this. So given some constellation that's flying along through the model data on a given orbit, what the orbit slicing does is it, um, it takes a large number of satellites and places them along the orbit. Uh, each with a time difference. Uh, the default is 60 seconds. The user can change that. And then given that constellation, flies that constellation through the model data. Here's time one, time two. To see what that constellation would see. And that's what the orbit slicing option is for. And that is the same analysis option chosen for the uh, time longitude, time latitude, sorry, reconstructions I showed earlier, such as shown here. So now closing, um, our future plans for Komodo involve improving the documentation. There's a lot of uh, behind the scenes work going on to speed up some interpolators, to use function composition behind the scenes to have a more um, plug and play structure for specific, uh, for model specific coordinate conversions. Uh, we're gonna be, we're working towards having, adding a happy layer on top of the fly through tool and eventually on top of the model readers ensemble Ensemble is working on developing a cross-language interactive interface on the cloud, as long as several code-free interfaces. There's a lot of uh, tutorials coming up, uh, that's just shown here, including the one I mentioned earlier about dealing with irregular satellite configurations, satellite constellation configurations. Um, and uh, the tools we're developing have a large variety of science applications, including the constellation studies I mentioned. Um, we invite you, we invite the community to collaborate with us. Uh, this is a list of models that we currently have and the list of models coming soon. <coughs> now I have some extra slides I'm just going to go through quickly uh, just to put them on the record. It's basically just how to get the uh, names and numbers in uh, to figure out how to run the code. Okay, and that's it.